Got a customer question, looking for a tractor, another unique set of circumstances that maybe you can help them out with because I'm not 100% sure I have the answer. I was able to gather some more information after uh, an email exchange and I think I've got a solution for them, but um, I'd be curious what your guys' thoughts are too. This is also, there's a reason I think why it's hard to find a solution that fits this customer's needs, but basically he's actually a local customer here in West Michigan and has a horse farm. And so with horse farms, you know, you have stalls, you have barns, you have tight quarters that you have to get in and out of. Um, but he also has deliveries that are coming in with uh, a requirement to lift off 2000 pounds or close to it at least off of a semi trailer and get down to the ground. So, you know, about four foot higher. So off the back of a semi, not like eight foot in the air or anything, but still a large amount of weight, four foot up in the air get it down to the ground, but then also be small enough, nimble enough to get inside a bar and get inside stalls, all that kind of thing. So he was looking for a machine that could fit those requirements. Any Well, a lot of machines out there can lift 2,000 pounds with a loader. His max width of that machine for a tractor is 65 inches, okay? So not quite five and a half feet. So that is, that is pretty darn narrow when you start just rattling off the models in your head, or at least in my head, that can lift 2,000 pounds, um, but then are only 65 inches wide max, all right? And so the reason he needs a tractor, because I started thinking about other kinds of equipment, uh, but he needs a tractor because he does use this one piece of equipment. He's got a couple old machines right now. When he bought the horse farm, it came with a couple old tractors that one doesn't even have a three point and a PTO. It's got a draw bar on it, that's it, and another one, is leaking and needs repairs all the time and so they're just both not great solutions he wants to get rid of those and then get one machine on a budget like most of us are and trying to get the best bang for the buck the all-in-one solution that can do all the mowing and the um you know the, the the hay bale moving around and the unloading the trucks and clean out the horse stalls and you name it all the other odds and ends that come with owning a horse farm so part two of his question was he again was interested in the in the county dk series because i had shown on my channel how um, those wheel hubs on the rear wheels can be bolted in different patterns to widen them or narrow them up. Uh, even the front hubs, they're not bolted on center sections that are in there, but they can re be reversed to have a wider or a narrower uh, stance on there, okay? And so anyways, I leaned on one of the Coyote dealers that I've been doing a lot of business with to try to get some information from them. But uh, part two, sorry, of this question was, what's the difference between the DK10 and the DK20 series? All right, and this is something that I had been trying to glean information from, from various videos, uh, just comparing specs and pictures and um, uh, an article or two that maybe was all encompassing, maybe it wasn't. But anyways, I talked to this Coyote dealer about that as well so I could be more informed on the differences between the DK10 series and then the brand new DK20 series. And so starting with the differences first, they are pretty darn minimal. Um, Primarily cosmetic, all right? Like the hood and the cowling has been updated and restylized. Uh, LED lights on the DK20s. On the open station, they moved the handle from kind of like how on the 3E series, it's almost like it's loader mounted. Um, now it's fender mounted, but that's really about it. So there's nothing of really much significance that's going on there. And, you know, of course, new tractors are going to have a higher price tag too. So if you can find a DK10 at this point, and it's still a, a brand new DK10, you're gonna be getting a pretty good deal um, and avoiding the new charges of the DK20. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Now, if you know any other significant differences between the DK10 and DK20, because again, I'm not a coyote, a new coyote dealer. I'm not privy to the coyote dealer meetings and I don't have coyote, you know, their corporate as a resource or anything like that. So I am prone to the shortcomings of only the knowledge, only the, the information that I can collect without going straight to the source. But uh, share that, leave a comment down below so that other folks know that are in the market making a decision between DK10 and DK20 and it seems like for the most part, it's a pretty insignificant change. 
Now on to a machine that can fit his scenario. I talked to that Coyote dealer and surprisingly enough, they are showing that they can configure it with ag tires, okay? Because ag tires, again, are, are gonna be uh, more like the farm, tractor farm tires that you see out there plowing hundreds or thousands of acres, you know? And they're gonna be the, the, the bar tire, the kind of the V-bar tire there. They're taller, they're skinnier. And so they're gonna have the, the narrowest footprint. And if you put them in the most narrow position, you can get them down to 63, 64 inches. So underneath that 65 inch requirement, all right? If you visualize that, thinking about a tractor that size that's that could be that narrow you start to think about why most of them aren't that narrow you know and because if you're lifting that amount of weight generally most loaders the more you can lift the higher they can lift as well and so if you're you know you'd like if you if you're standing up right you're like a nice stable platform if you're going to do something and if you narrow it up and you start to move weight up it can be easier to to tip to the side but if you have a more stable platform at the base and you just have that, that stability there. So you don't feel like it's as, you know, top heavy and can turn over. And so I think that's kind of the same concept with widening the tractors as you lift more and can lift higher. And so it's, um, and he's fully aware of that. He is fully aware of the fact that it's an odd set of circumstances that, um, you know, you have to keep that load even more centered, you know, and make sure that there's nothing that's off center. Cause if you had way too much weight on the left or the right hand side, it could be more prone to tipping left or right because of that. So I'm um, curious, I don't know if, if uh, TYM, if New Holland, if Massey, if, you know, any other brands out there can offer a similar capability. And again, if you have to lift off 2000 pounds, that means your loader has to be rated for well above that. Because as you may know, the loader ratings are generally at the base of the loader. Like if you were gonna take your quick attach bucket off and then you have the quick attach plate right there, that's basically where the, the rating is at. And the further out your load is, the less weight you're gonna lift. And so you wanna be 15, 20% minimum above whatever you have to lift up. And of course it matters how high you have to lift. If you only have to get it off the ground and carry it a foot, well, you're gonna be able to lift a lot more weight doing that versus having to get it way up high and like try to triple stack a big hay bale, for example, you know, where you have to lift it way up and, and do it there. So a lot of different loader dynamics in play, a lot of information is lacking in loader specs as well. And so I would encourage you lean on forums. You know, if you have a requirement that you need for your tractor and you're uncertain, go to a place like Tractor by Net where they handle, they, they talk about every tractor brand that there is out there and post your question, you know, can my, I'm looking to buy one of these tractors. I need to do this. Does anybody out there have experience lifting something similar and did it work or not? Or do you have a suggestion on what would work? So great way to get free information for folks that have done it because there are millions of tractor owners out there. But I'm happy to answer questions like this because it helps me learn more about the industry as well. And while I know like my own database is growing pretty large, if what I do know, there are still lots of things that I'm learning every day. And it's with the help of places like Tractor My Net or um, people submitting questions where I can go talk to somebody else and get an answer and um, just things I've never thought about, right? And so, uh, good question, unique set of circumstances. I'm sure there's other folks out there dealing with the same set of circumstances too. So share your information, share your, your details, what works for you on a setup down below in the comments and help him out and anybody else that may be coming across those same circumstances in the future. Now on that note, we do sell tractors and tractor attachments. So if you're in the market for something, Maybe it's a tractor, maybe it's a, an attachment for your front end loader, like a grapple, a snow pusher, pallet forks. Could be something for your three point hitch, could be a tiller, a box blade, a snow blower, you name it. We can most likely help you out. And we ship all over the country every day of the week. You can see what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. And if you're not sure what to get to fit your machine, we'd love to help you out. Just shoot us a quick email, give us your tractor and make and your model, and we can fit you up with the right size, the right quick attach, the right tool before you buy it and find out it doesn't work. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.